Hello, my name is Amanda Goeman, and today I will be reading an excerpt from my novel called Even the Devil Was an Angel. Even the Devil Was an Angel focuses on Beatty, a young child who flees from a highly segregated, highly prejudiced town and stays in a place called the Weed House. This is the last scene in which she is in that specific place. They were the color of chestnuts, caramel, chocolate, the tone of milky coffee, the tenor of the richest honey, the gold of butterscotch, the smoothness of peanut butter, coffee beans, chestnuts. They smile innocently and hover like the wind. They live in purity and eat caramel candies and like caramels, they are sweet, clear, and unwilling to pour. They are too big hipped, too curvy, too dark to be white, but they are too cultured, too light, too loved to be black. Twenty-one-year-old Renee hated these women because she could never be one. She and her fellow prostitutes fluttered into the living room in a flurry of Jesus hissed between cigarettes and lipstick. These high heels are killing me, Janine sighed as she slipped on tight scarlet shoes that looked more like weapons than footwear. Renee rolled her eyes confidently. Honey, if they're not hurting, then they're not helping. Everyone nodded in assent. Each temptress had her own specific brand. Janine had her shoes, Louise's push-up bra, Mary's crimson talon nails, and Renee, of course, had her jewelry. From her purse, she retrieved a long necklace and set it seductively across her black cleavage. She waited for everyone to ooh and ah, which, of course, they did. She said, chest thrust out. I tell all them guys I don't need no money. A girl's best friend is jewelry. When they all hustled out the door, little Eliza and Nisa burst into the room, tugging Beatty along. The young child's eyes were wide with fright and a violent red stain tinged the back of her dress. Is she gonna die? Nisa whined. Renee rolled her eyes, chuckling. No, she's not gonna die. She's just menstruating. Menstruating? It means she can have a baby now. The twins stared at Beatty with moon calf eyes, awed that they were in the presence of an initiated woman. Beatty smiled softly to herself. If she could have a baby, that meant one day, baby, someone would love her. But old mama blinked and she no longer saw a child. She saw a flat belly that would swell into a watermelon, two arms that would take a baby and thrust it into her ancient waiting arms, a pair of legs that would shut out a child, a whole new burden. And these women did not lay happiness, but misery, the thighs shoved out tragedy. These girls were her damnation. Go to hell. You little black hood, old mama hissed, and let your babies go to hell too. The words lashed at Beatty's face. Go to hell. She slipped out the door just as thrown glass shouted behind her, go to hell. The unforgiving January wind stung her legs, go to hell. Beneath her feet sat to dry. Dead weeds like a graveyard of nature's miscarriages, drowned in sizzling. Abandonment. Go to hell. But wasn't she already there?